I just, uh, I want to apologize to everyone's moms. I'm sorry to everyone. I was very naive. I'm so, so sorry for everything that's happened. Because in spite of what people say now, it's my fault. Because it was my project. And I insisted. Insisted on everything. Everything had to be my way. And this is where we've ended up. Hungry, cold and confused. I love you, Mom. Dad. I'm so sorry. I'm scared to close my eyes. I'm scared to open them. Because I don't get what postmodernism is. I'm so scared. What's postmodernism? Hey, how's it going? Welcome along to another video. So today's how to read, we're going to be looking at postmodernism. So what is postmodernism? Postmodernism is a label given to the general period of time following from the 1960s onward. It's associated with cultural forms that display certain characteristics we might recognise as awareness of their own construction, freely using irony and parody, as well as mixing lower or popular culture and high art. That link between high art and popular culture is thought of as being one of the great levellers, blurring the boundaries between the elite and the supposed proles of mass culture. This is often seen through the way that people can write in a format that discusses the in a less rigid and stuffy way, instead approaching writing more playfully. For example, there's a theorist called Slavos Zizek who discusses something called Lacanian psychoanalysis, basically a way of understanding how people think and behave using films by Alfred Hitchcock. What we see here is a breaking down of borders between the high concept of psychoanalysis and the low-brow popular culture of Hitchcock film. Another way in which we might see this blurring is through something called pop art, most commonly associated with the artist Andy Warhol, famous for Campbell's soup cans, which takes the image of a common mass-produced thing, a Campbell's soup can, and creates art out of it. Similarly, he uses the iconic face of Hollywood actress Marilyn Monroe to create what is now considered to be an iconic form of art in of itself. This undoing of boundaries is significant as it suggests a move away from the modernist period. This is one that was fixated on universalizing meaning through logic using either or constructions. Modernism, preferring the absolute rationality of unity and order, would say that there is high culture and low culture, while postmodernism, interested in creating paradox, ambiguity and irony, moves toward a formulation of both and. So Andy Warhol can be both high and popular culture. In terms of literature, postmodernism also rejects this division. We might see writing that actively reflects on itself as writing, or the narrator discussing the process of writing, rather than just telling a story in a more traditional sense. So if you find yourself reading a text that suddenly indicates to you, the reader, that it is a constructed narrative, one that is made up, then it's probably utilising some form of postmodernist strategy. Often a narrator who can't be trusted, known as the unreliable narrator, who comments on the fact they are unreliable is showing a form of reflexivity. This is a trope associated with postmodernism. In terms of the postmodern genre, when we're being directed towards some aspect of the text, we're seeing a dimension of postmodernism. Think about the screen films which constantly reference scary movies and their plot points. For instance, people who aren't virgins die first. Also, community often uses extremely self-referential and knowing plot points, such as the way the show parodies various genres of movies and TV shows. We can see this in the manner by which any given episode may switch from the familiar scene setup, or mise-en-scene of the sitcom, clearly switching to something else like, say, action. The show also uses meta-reference through the character of Abed, who is referred to as meta throughout the show, but also constantly envisages his own experiences as occurring within a TV show, which, well, they are. So now we can see what postmodernism is. What's the difference between postmodernism and postmodernity? Well, Postmodernism relates to the cultural, so books, art, films, and so on, while postmodernity is discussing the wider social and political context. In other words, a book can be an example of postmodernism, but when we talk about its wider function within culture or what it might tell us about that culture, we are referencing the conditions of postmodernity. Part of the reason it may be so tricky to understand what postmodernism is is because of its fluid nature. The whole project negates the idea of the 
there being absolutes, including the idea of there being one singular truth. Rather than existence having organizing principles or grand narratives, as Francoise Lyotard calls them, everything is subjective, made up of competing little narratives that make up multiple and shifting truths. This is thought to be a more inclusive way of thinking. By rejecting the universalization of modernity, postmodernism offers a way to think more inclusively in terms of things like power, particularly around women, people of color, LGBTQIA people, as well as in terms of the impact of colonialization, the project whereby nations invade others to utilize their land and resources. Rather than having one grand narrative, if we have lots of little ones, we are able to see and hear from those who might have previously been discounted. Politically, there was lots of upheaval during the 1960s and 70s from various groups, including protests against the US's decision to declare war against Vietnam. However, these concepts, which are usually tied to ideas of identity, are still refuted in postmodernism. Rather than there being an individual self which is fully understandable, there is a subject who is not coherent or singular, having been impacted on by other forces outside of it. So if you think of this yourself, you are influenced every day by others and are constantly changing and evolving. The argument here is that postmodernism accounts for this, whereas previously this might not have been the case, where ideas of humanism were centered around the idea of identity being a coherent whole. The fact that all of these ideas are so complex and are still being debated also demonstrates the importance and relevance of postmodernism even today. In addition, it's not just an academic theory in that it has profound implications for our very ways of being. The political consequences of disrupting universalizing and homogenous narratives is exactly where things like the work of post-colonialism comes in as well as other theories of inclusivity such as feminism and queer theory. Okay, that's it for postmodernity. I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember to like, comment and subscribe and comment below for topics you'd like me to cover in future videos. See you later.